everyone, Mimi here. Welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. This tutorial will be the first part of creating this bee-themed mason jar tumbler with the beehive lid topper. This video will cover only the bottom portion of this mason jar tumbler, which will also include the double honey drip, and video number two will go over the lid and topper. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified of all my future videos. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a 12 ounce mason jar from Makerflow. I've already prepped and spray painted my tumbler off screen. I've also used electrical tape to mask off the upper portion of the threads so I can keep that area clean. I'll be doing a peekaboo design so I'm using the epoxy method to lay down my glitter. I'm using Liquidy Split from KS Resin and I'm spreading about 2 to 3 mLs all over my jar because I'll be using chunky glitters. I wanted more of a honey color so I mixed two glitters from BJ's. I used Squeeze Lemonade and Egyptian Lover and mixed them together. All I'm going to do is pretty much dump this mixture all over my epoxy jar until I get full coverage. I also went ahead and sprinkled some on the bottom and then used the glitter on my parchment paper to press the glitter onto the bottom and made sure it was fully covered. As usual, I'll go ahead and tap off the excess glitter and then take a small piece of the parchment paper and go around the entire jar patting down any glitter that may be sticking up. You always want to do this when using chunkier cuts so that when you epoxy over this layer, it'll take less coats and get a much smoother finish. Because I'm doing a peekaboo, I want a very smooth finish before laying down my stencil. Before I set this aside to dry for a couple hours, I'll remove the electrical tape around the rim so the epoxy doesn't cure over it. Here is my cup all cleaned up. I also did go ahead and retape it with the electrical tape. Now I'm going to apply my honeycomb stencils to create my peekaboo look. Each hexagon that I'm using is approximately about an inch wide. I'm using red removable vinyl and applying my stencils all around my jar where I think it will look good. It's totally up to you where you want to place these, so use your best judgment and move any pieces if you need to. Once they're all placed, I'm going to use a squeegee to go over all the vinyl to make sure they're fully adhered so no paint will seep through. I then took my jar outside and spray painted it this beigey off-white color. I used the color Bone White from Montana Colors. Before we remove the stencils, I'll be applying some alcohol inks to create more depth and give the paint a little more of a rustic look. So here's a closer look at the spray paint that I used. I totally got this inspiration from Sandy's Organized Chaos. She made a beautiful bee tumbler and I fell in love with the look. I pulled a variety of alcohol inks and will be using a chip brush to apply the ink. 
I didn't know which color or colors I wanted to use, so here I'm testing them out on a scrap of backing paper. I decided on these three colors, lemonade, sunshine yellow, and butterscotch, all from Ranger. I'm starting with the darkest color and adding it all over the painted surface in sections. I'm adding the ink and then using a circular motion with my chip brush to spread it around. There's no right or wrong way to add the color, so I'm just going to go through each color until I get the depth that I'm looking for. After all my color is added, I take a folded piece of paper towel, spread some 91% alcohol onto it, and wipe it all over the jar to remove some of the harsher ink stains. This also distresses the overall finish, so I'm not going too crazy with this. The look is completely up to you, so have fun with this and go back and forth with each step with as many colors that you want and the depth that you're looking for. I wanted a darker concentration of color on the edges of my hexagons, so I went back and added more ink around those areas and blended it in. Once I'm happy with the look, I'll go ahead and immediately remove the hexagon stencils. Go slow and be careful when doing this so you don't scratch any of the painted and alcohol inked portions. Before adding a coat of epoxy, I'll go ahead and add my water slide images. I found these sunflower images on Google and printed them out on clear water slide paper. I did seal these three times with clear spray and trim them out. I do have a full tutorial all about water slides that I'll link at the top right if you want a more in-depth tutorial. Make sure your alcohol ink is completely dry before adding your images. I have my bowl of room temperature water and I'm wetting the surfaces of the jar where I want to place these sunflowers. I 
I work with only a few images at a time and place them onto my jar where I like the placement. I did also make sure to leave a big enough area where my main decal will go. I'm using a silicone tool to remove as much water that is underneath the image and then using a paper towel to blot it dry. Continue until you have placed all the images onto your tumbler and you are happy with the placement. Once I was finished, I let the water slide images completely dry. It'll take about an hour or so, and then added a very thin coat of epoxy. I let that layer cure, retaped off the top rim, and now we're ready to add the honey drip. This is the first time I've ever done drips on a tumbler, so I'm trying this out for the first time on video. I mixed up about 20 ml of fast setting epoxy for my drip. I grabbed a bigger cup to mix my thickening agent. I'm using She Thick from DIY Epoxy. It comes in a sealed bag, but I transferred it into this container. Like I said, I've never done this before or used this product, so I'm basically flying by the seat of my pants and hoping it works out. I'm starting off slow and just adding a couple of teaspoons of the she thick until I get it mixed into my epoxy and feel the consistency. I'll continue to add the she thick one teaspoon at a time until I like the thickness. I then also added my glitter mixture. This is the same glitter mixture that I used for my peekaboo. After thoroughly mixing, I'll test how fast this mixture will run down by putting some of it on the top rim of my cup. It was still running down too quickly, so I added a couple more teaspoons to thicken it up.
When it's ready, I grab a small amount on one side of my popsicle stick. I'll then spread it across the top right underneath where my electrical tape sits. Because I'm using fast setting epoxy, I have to work pretty fast before the epoxy starts curing. I'm trying to get the drip to look as natural and realistic as possible. I'll continue to add the drip until I get it all the way around the top of the jar. I'll also try and manipulate how far it travels down by turning it upside down from time to time. When I'm finally happy with the way that it looks, I went ahead and placed it on my turner until it cured. One quick note, when you get it on your turner, make sure that you do take the tape off so that it does not cure and prevent you from having difficulties when moving on to the next step. Once it was dry, I saw that there was a gap right underneath where the rim was taped. So I decided that I will be adding another layer of the honey drip and try to get rid of it. This is totally optional, but I'm a bit OCD, so I went ahead and added it. But before I do that, I did want to go ahead and place my main decal that says Be Kind. I did get this off of Etsy. And I will place that link in the description box below if you would like to go ahead and grab it as well. This is the same way that I applied all of the other decals that are already on the cup. But I wanted to add this before I did my second layer of the honey drip. So I found the opening where I left a space big enough just for this decal. And I am just dry fitting it to make sure that it'll fit. As always, I have already spray sealed this three times and now place it in the water to activate the adhesive. I also did go ahead and grab the same water and put it on the area where I'll be placing the decal just so that the process will be a lot smoother. The best thing about water slides is that it can be moved around while it is still wet and put in the exact placement that you need to be. As with all my water slides, I'm going to go ahead and squeegee out all the water that's underneath. And I'm using my silicone tool to do that. And once I get out as much water as I need to, I will go ahead and take a paper towel and dry it off and set it aside until it is fully dry, usually about an hour or two.
I'm now ready to add my second layer of my drip. I made this batch of epoxy a bit thicker than the previous one. And with this, I was hoping to not have the same issue happen again where there was a gap from it running down too far. So I went ahead and taped it off again with my electrical tape. And I will be applying this with my metal stir stick. You can use any tool you want as long as you're able to get it onto the jar. And you'll also notice that this batch is also a lot lighter. I don't think I used quite enough of the gold glitter when I mixed this. But I do like the contrast once it is all done. Because this layer was quite a bit thicker than the previous one, it was more difficult to work with. And as I was working, if it wasn't moving like I would want it to, I used my heat gun to coax it to move further down as I needed. If you also use your heat gun to kind of warm it up to have it be a little bit more malleable, just be careful not to overheat it or you could end up burning your resin. So if you do decide to go ahead and do a second layer like I'm doing for the drip, make sure that you have it placed all around the jar like you did previously. And I am paying special attention towards the top right underneath where the tape is just so that I don't end up getting that gap and disliking how the end result is. So I'm kind of piling it on and I will continue to do this until I like the look. When I'm done adding the second layer, I will again place it on my turner until it is cured. So here is my jar the next day after the second layer has fully dried. I am now taking a 220 grit sandpaper and smoothing out any of the rough areas. Like I mentioned before, this layer was a bit thicker so a lot of the chunky glitter did poke out a little bit. But I am just carefully sanding down any of the rough areas. Once I am done with all the sanding, I will make sure to wash it really well with some dish soap and water, dry it off, and then I will be ready to add my final coat or coats of epoxy. For this tumbler, I did apply two final coats until my jar was smooth. I let it cure and the bottom portion of your tumbler is all done. Here's a look at what it looks like. Please stay tuned for part two where I'll be showing you how I created the matching lid and topper. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye.